How are you doing, you wonderful nerds? Scott here. Have you seen that Deadpool 2 teaser that came out a few weeks back? I know a lot of you guys have, and it makes me really excited for the sequel. And since you guys are always asking me to make a Deadpool video, I decided that today is the day that I slack off and give that opportunity to someone else who wants to do it. So yes, we have another guest video today from Mr. C's Comics, who wants to talk about Deadpool and his secret link back to Shakespeare. It's really interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts about it. But first, let me talk to you guys about a company called Snups. Snups is, of course, the best place to collect, organize, and share the things that you own and you cherish. You know we love comic books here. You want to give them a nice home. You can, of course, organize your collections on virtual shelves, which can be public or private if you want to keep it all to yourself or show it off to the world. And if you want to take it a little bit further than that, you can even join groups like the comic book group that I'm a part of. Guys, go check it out. There'll be links in the description. You can use those links down there to check out all the stuff that I've been collecting over there. All of my shelves and my groups and everything like that. And I'd love to see what you guys are collecting too. Let me in on that. Let me let me, let me me see what you got going on. Snups is of course available on iOS and Android. And it's also just a website that you can go to for freezies. So check it out. But for now, I present to you an analysis of Deadpool and Shakespeare. Enjoy. Wade Wilson, Puck from Midsummer Night's Dream, Festy the Clown. What do they have in common? Let's find out. Deadpool is a fun character, but he's not for everyone. He happens to be my favorite, and it's because of more than just his yellow speech bubbles and gorgeous complexion. Having read Deadpool for many years, I've come to realize that he embodies a few traits of Shakespearean characters I come across in the classroom. Most notably, of course, is the fact that he often addresses the reader directly, showing awareness of the fact that he's in a comic book. Different writers treat this differently, but it's a staple of his character. However, beyond that, his place in the Marvel Universe can effectively be compared to characters like Puck from Midsummer Night's Dream, as well as Festy, the licensed fool from Twelfth Night. Let's get the most known quality out of the way first, and tackle Wade Wilson's treatment of that beloved fourth wall. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. All right, so it seems important to clarify some of the language around a character's treatment of good old wall number four. Commonly, we'll see something like a shared cultural reference or even a full-blown talk to the camera type of thing, and it all gets labeled as breaking the fourth wall. Technically though, there are different levels of this. A character can lean on the fourth wall, and that'll often entail something like a shared reference to a real world thing, or a joke that focuses on the fictional world being fictional. By doing this, we're seeing things that would fall under the label of medium awareness. Literally, this is when a character shows that they are aware of the medium in which they've been placed. Wade is aware that he's in a comic book, even if he doesn't address the reader directly. Of course, however, there are moments when the merc with a mouth just straight up talks to us, knowing full well that he's just part of a story. Many of you already know that he's not the only comic book character that does this, but he's certainly the most notable, and it's really part of the Deadpool brand at this point. He's mouthy, he's funny, he's violent, and he'll pull a Ferris Bueller on you without hesitation. A lot of this stuff is actually covered, along with other characters acting this way, in a couple of older NerdSync videos like Comics Going Meta and She-Hulk and the Fourth Wall. Scott covers more ground in terms of characters than I do here, so take a look there if you haven't seen them yet. So, what precedent is there for going Miley Cyrus on the fourth wall? Well, I'm not the first guy to point this out, but our buddy Billy Shakes had a penchant for writing self-awareness into his plays. One of my favorite examples is the play A Midsummer Night's Dream. After a couple hours of fantastical revelry, our favorite sprite Puck ends the play with a plea directly to the audience. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended. That you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream, gentles do not reprehend, if you pardon, we will mend. So what we see here is Puck offering some advice to theater goers. If anything in the play offended you, simply remember it as a dream. Moreover, the viewers are asked for their hands in applause if they be friends and enjoyed the show. The final speech in the epilogue is indeed made to the audience, and Puck is showing clear awareness that the audience is that of a theater, not just passers-by within the fictional world of the story. In making the final speech, the fourth wall is effectively broken. So in turning our attention to another play, we can see that the similarities between Deadpool and the characters of Shakespeare stretch a bit further. In the play Twelfth Night, we're met with a fool named Fest whose job it is to just go around and make witty comments, joke about people, and generally crack wise to everyone he sees. Now, The Fool is a stock character and has been used in theater and film for a very long time. Taken from the actual profession of a jester, a fool is the proto-form of what many people these days understand as the comic relief. The comic relief character has of course been portrayed in many ways, including within characters that contribute additional layers to the stock character, enabling it to be a deep, meaningful piece of the story. However, there is a crucial element to this character archetype that should be known before we go deeper into Festy or Deadpool, and that is that The Fool is a character that is usually not affected by the ending of a story. Now, you may be asking, why does that even matter? Well, The Fool, as far as Shakespeare is concerned, is a tool through which a writer can make criticisms and commentaries of his audience. Think that people are shallow, dumb, materialistic? Give The Fool a joke or two that points this stuff out and they'll go, oh yeah, 
This is the kind of stuff that made The Simpsons and Family Guy so critically acclaimed. Now, getting back to our focus, Festy is treated a bit differently than the stock fool. In Twelfth Night, he exists outside of the typical character. He's nothing like anyone else in the play, and is also outside the norms of the setting of Illyria. He just kind of pops in and out to watch and comment on the regular inhabitants. To me, this is pretty much Deadpool's cameos in most other comic series. Sure, Deadpool is involved in the plot, but when you account for his healing factor and the fact that he'll never be gone, he just pops in, comments on what he observes, and then pops back out. Commentary made, reader's thoughts and chuckles activated, and his job is complete. The comparative view of Festy and Deadpool doesn't end there, though. Things get a bit more existential. Keep in mind that Wade Wilson can't die. Between the healing factor and the curse, he grows back or more or less stays the same age. Now, I'm ignoring the narrative of Deadpool 2099 because I see that as a standalone story. I'm sticking to standard Deadpool here. Both Shakespeare's Festy and Deadpool live in a space where they have practically no mobility. They can't grow or change, they're caught in this place of their own identity, and while they help others, sometimes, move on with their lives, they can't move on with theirs. Now, Festy doesn't ever seem to really care about this. He gets some cash here and there, and he's all the happier for it. However, Deadpool gets put through the ringer time and time again, only to bounce back to home base. Became an X-Man? Not for long. People thought you were a hero? Well, not anymore. Have a family that loves you? Nope, you're garbage. Funny garbage, but still garbage. Insightful, witty, self-aware garbage, but still garbage. Responsible for helping take down Hydra Captain America? Nah, have some demolished building. Deadpool is Marvel's perpetual fool. He comes in and out, and his main function is to entertain the readers, show the characters what they're doing right or wrong, and then usher in the ending of the story while he lives on without resolution. It's a bit depressing, but definitely worth studying. And with that, I'd again like to thank everyone at NerdSync for having me as a guest. It's a great honor, and I'm so glad to be welcomed into such a cool community. If you like what I do, feel free to come and find me at my channel. Take care, everyone. Thank you to Mr. C's Comics for helping out with this video. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below, and I'll respond to some of them in Monday's comment response video. And of course, there will be links to his channel if you want to see more of his work down in the description below and also at the end of this video. And hey, if you're new to the channel, we make thoughtful and educational videos about comic books and superheroes every single week. So hit that big sexy subscribe button so you never miss an upload. Guys, we're so close to 400,000 subscribers. I would love to hit that by the end of the year. Let's make it happen, guys. And if you really want to, you can tap that bell icon to join the notification squad, my favorite nerds on the internet. As always, I'm going to give a huge thanks to our patrons, especially Christopher Lang, Keaton Lampert, Elizabeth Monsell, and the rest of the wonderful nerds who help us keep this show going over at patreon.com slash nerdsync. You guys are the best. Click or tap right here to watch one of Mr. C's videos. I recommend this one about Secret Empire. It was the first one that I saw of his, and I really enjoyed it. Really got me hooked on his channel. Check it out. Also, you can click right down here for something. YouTube's mysterious algorithm thinks you'll enjoy. I'm running out of time because these end cards are short. Anyway, my name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics. See ya.